In this video, we'll look at the times tables. So we'll start with a zero and we'll end with 12. You can see a times tables grid on the screen and we'll work with that. So here I'll share some tricks that will help you multiply. So I'd like you to have a look at the patterns within this grid. Look at the colour, look at the numbers. What do you notice? Is there something that repeats itself? Are there any patterns in there? And you've probably noticed that anything multiplied by zero equals zero. So zero times zero is zero, zero times one is zero, zero times three is zero, zero times four is zero and so on, zero times five thousand is zero, one thousand times zero is zero. And this repeats itself on this column as well because it shows the same thing. It's zero times zero or zero times one and so on. So the key thing for this part is that anything times zero equals zero. And then we move on to the ones, the ones time table. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 100 is 100. So it means one lot of something. So if you go once the shop to get two items, you'll end up with just those two items. If you go one time to the shop to get seven items, you'll end up with seven and so on. So 1000 times 1 is 1000, 1 times 550 is 550. So in terms of this, anything times by 1 is equal, anything is equal to the number itself. So 5 times 1 is 5. Then moving on to the 2s. What do you notice? I want you to just stop for a few seconds and see if there is any pattern in terms of the one times table and the twos. What happens? From to get getting from one to two, what happens? First of all, one add one equals two, so or one doubled equals two. And also, 2 doubled equals 4, 3 doubled equals 6, 4 doubled equals 8, 5 doubled equals 10. So really, the 2 times table is just double. Double of the 1s. And that's not difficult to work out for any number. And of course, this repeats itself over here as well in this column because this is the twos timetable as well. And so we can say two times a number is equal to double. The number. And moving on to the threes. So we've got three times two is six, three times three is nine, three times four is twelve, three times five is fifteen, and so on. So you can work out threes by going, okay, I want to work out three times seven. So I got seven, add seven, add seven, three lots of seven. So 7 at 7 is 14, and then the 7 is 21. And the same thing appears in this column as well. 
because we multiply in by 3 here as well. So 3 times 7 is equal to 7 at 7 at 7. And looking at the 4s, so for a minute let's jump from the 2s to the 4s and see if there is any connection between the two. And if you look at the 2 times table, you will be able to see that it's half of the 4s, or in other words, the fours are double the twos because four is double two as well. So two times two gives us four, and of course, that'd be the case here as well. So, if I want to work out um, four times. 8 for example, I can do 2 times 8 which is double 8. So double 8 is 16 and then at 16 that gives us 32. So that's a nice trick to use. And then through the 4s we can go to the 8s because again you just need to double in order to go to the eights. So look at that. From four we go to eight, from eight we go to sixteen, twelve to twenty-four, sixteen to thirty-two, and so on. So if I want to work out what is eight times seven. So I can have double seven, which is fourteen. And then at 14, we get 28. So that gives me four lots of seven. All I need to do now to get to eight lots of it, we'll do add another 28, and that is 56. So that's how we get there. And course this is going to repeat itself for the eighth column as well. Okay so let's now make another connection. So we did the threes. What is the connection between three and six? It's just like the twos and the four, so it's double. So if you know your threes, then the sixes are just double the threes. So let's try it with one example. Let's say I want to do six times five. So to get three lots of five, I got okay, five and five, ten and another five, fifteen. So that's three lots of them. Double that fifteen is thirty. So get the three and then double that to get the six. So we've already done zero, one, two, three, four, six, and eight. The fives are what learners typically consider to be the easiest one because you've got 5, 10, 15, 20 and so on. So that's not a difficult one to do. And moving on to the nines, I'll skip the sevens for a minute. So there is a connection between the threes, sixes and nines. As you can see, three and three make six and another three makes nine. So if you want, you could you could do that. So you go three, let's try one out. If you know what is three times four, 
then you get 6 times 4 by doubling that. So 12 and 12 is 24. Add another 12 to get to the 9 times 4. So that is just 36. But I also have a nice trick for the 9s, which I'm going to share here. So let's look at this. 9 times 1 equals 9. 9 times 2 equals 18. 9 times 3 equals 27. 9 times 4 equals 36. 9 times 5 equals 45. 9 times 6 equals 54. 9 times 7. 9 times 8. 9 times 9 and 9 times 10. 73, 72, 81, and 90. So, what do you notice? The units, which is 9, 8, 7 in the answers, 6, 5, 4, so they go down by 1 every time. And the tens within the answers, like 1, 2, 3, so they're going up by 1 each time. So, that's a nice and useful pattern for when you've got to do them in a row or write them in a column. But when it comes to you finding a random timetable within the nines, so let's say you want to work out what is nine times six. Now, if you look at the digits within the answers, so within the first one, we've got an answer of nine. So I can put a zero in front because there's zero, zero tens, just for showing this to you. So zero and nine, if you add the digits, gives us nine. 1 and 8 gives us 9, 2 and 7 gives us 9, 3 and 6 gives us 9, 4 and 5, 9, 5 and 4, 9, 6 and 3, 9, 7 and 2, 9. So all of these, if you add the tens digit and the units digit, they add up to 9. So we know that the two digits will add up to 9. But also, when you look at the pattern, 9 times 1 begins with a 0, 9 times 2 begins with a 1 9 times 3 begins with a 2 so it's one less so if i want to work out 9 times uh 6 i can i can see that the answer will start with a 5 so one less than a 6 and i need a digit that when i add to 5 will give me 9 so that is a 4 so 54 should be the answer and it works with all of these so the 9s are okay as well Tens, nice and easy because 1 times 10 is 10, 2 times 10 is 20, 3 times 10 is 30, and so on. And when it comes to 11, again, 1 times 11 is 11, 2 times 11 is 22. So that digit is repeated for the units as well. So tens and the units will have the same digit up to the point where you get to um, 110 and then 121. So 11 times 11, you can break one of these 11s down into 10 and 1. So then we'll do 11 times 10 first to give us 110 and 1 times 11, which is just 11. Add them together, so that gives us 121. And in terms of the 12 time table, we've got to look at one example as well. So if I want to work out what is 12 times 12, so I will break down the 12 into 10 and 2. So I do 12 times 10 first to give 120 and 12 times 2, which is 24. So add them together. And gives us 144. So that is pretty straightforward. So we've shared some tricks. The only ones that we didn't share a trick for was the sevens. But based on what we just covered, it works out that you only need to remember what is seven times seven, which is 49, because the rest of the sevens is covered by other timetables, such as this one, for example. 56 is 7 times 8, but we looked at tricks for 8, so you should know how to work it out. Or the 9 times 7, for example, we looked at the 9 timetable tricks, so that should help work it out.